Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film Sea Fever, and it's not a Shudder film. I know I do a lot of Shudder reviews, but I do other stuff too. This one's actually on Hulu at the moment when I'm doing this review, and this is part of my uh, kind of journey to hit all the movies that I've heard a good amount about in the past year or so. A lot of people were like, oh, these were like my top films that were wi widely released in 2020. So I'm going through trying to hit all those and sea fever was one that i had heard some pretty good stuff about so let me get into it this film was written and directed by nyasa hardeman who's done a lot of tv shows um a little bit of writing but more directing uh including one episode of the show in humans and two of jessica jones i put those in there because those are mainly just the ones that i know of have heard of uh so this one they it takes place on the ocean in a trawler boat which, if people don't know a trawler boat, that's the one that, like, throws out the net and pulls out a bunch of fish. So, that's what a trawler is. It's not a commonly used term, so I'm sorry if I if people feel like I'm insulting your intelligence. I just know there are probably some people out there who aren't familiar with it. And that's a word that, until I sat down to watch this film, I have not heard in a long time. So, the trawler boat in this is actually called the Niam Sinwir. I'm sorry if I totally messed that up. Uh, it translates to Niam of the Golden Hair, which is actually an old Irish story. Now, this is an Irish film, so I'm assuming that there is a correlation there. Uh, I watched the film, and then I read a little bit of a synopsis on Wikipedia about what that particular story is. And I'm not going to go into similarities or anything, because I feel like that could end up ruining some stuff about the film. And this is a no-spoiler review, since this film is relatively new, and I'm sure a lot of people have not seen it. So go ahead, watch the film. It is definitely worth watching. I really enjoyed it. And then go ahead and look into, I'll tell you what it's called again, Niam, uh, Niam of the Golden Hair is the story. And Niam is N-I-A-M-H. Uh, so yeah. So the role of Freya, uh, the older, not the older woman in this, because there is a much older woman in this, probably the middle-aged woman in this, uh, was originally going to be played by Tony Collette, but unfortunately scheduling issues kept that from happening, which I really would have been interested to see what this film would have been with Tony Collette as Freya, because the woman who played Freya in this did a good job. I think overall all the acting was really good in this film, but the thing is Tony Collette is kind of that... She takes every role and it, she makes it next level, basically. Like, she'll take a role that's just, like, interesting or good and make it phenomenal. Like, that's her acting style. That's what she does. So it just made me wonder when I read that, like, what would this film have been with Toni Collette in it? Probably even better than it is, and it's quite good. So, very short synopsis, because I don't want to give too much weight. It's basically, the film is a scientist. Sioban, I think, is the name of the the main actress i'm just gonna call her the main actress because i think i'm butchering her name um so she's a marine biologist basically and she wants to go onto a trawling boat because she's kind of sick of being in the lab setting all of her life and she's like i want to get out where the action is i want to be able to see things firsthand that i'm studying here so she gets hooked up with this trawler boat where it's you know just the typical trawler crew and her as a scientist, and something happens while they're out at sea. And that's all I'm going to say, because I definitely think people should watch this film. It's very good. There's a very weird little intro before this film, which actually, uh, before the film actually starts, that's kind of like this weird, like, thanks for watching intro that you would think would be at a place kind of like in a theater. Like, you know how in, in the theater before it, it starts the film, and actually even before it starts the trailers, they always have this kind of like, thanks for coming to, you know, Regal Cinemas or Cinemark or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it felt like that. And it was just like odd because I've not seen that in front of a film before. So I don't know. Very weird. Uh, the camera work is really interesting in this film. I, and that goes to something. Visually, it looks really good. Technically, it's very well pulled off. Like I was saying, like the acting is really good in this. The directing is really good. The cinematography is really good. The camera work is very interesting and engaging. There's some really interesting shots. There's some interesting kind of movements around characters and with characters and through things. And 
it's a small space to use because it's a trawler boat that's not really big. And especially with the size of the crew there, uh, there's not a whole lot of space. So it feels interesting how the camera works within that kind of confined space because it, it does a good job of showing you everything there and showing you the characters there while making it feel appropriately claustrophobic because it kind of would be, but also not too claustrophobic. It gives you enough space that you can feel that you don't feel like you're on top of everyone as a viewer. So it kind of walks this fine line of like giving you the feeling of that claustrophobia that the characters would be feeling, but also allowing you as a viewer space so that you don't feel like you're crunched up against people. So very interesting and great job with the visuals on that. Um, and it also just kind of like shows you the tight spaces they're working within, which is also important for the film. Differences in lifestyle and thought process end up being shown immediately in this film between everyone on the on the crew, mainly between people on the crew and this marine biologist because that's where the big difference in lifestyle is going to be. That's where the big difference in thought process really is going to be. You know, science versus, you know, blue collar workers. Um, there, there's a big difference there. You know, people come from all different walks of life and that kind of shapes how you think and what your life experiences is, are and everything like that. So because of that throughout the film, there does end up being some kind of a conflict having to do with that. But then there's also uh, a level of cooperation that happens as well. And yeah, just watch the film. Once things start to happen, you know what I'm talking about. There's a nice driving sense of mystery, and as an audience member, you're just as confused as the characters are. That's one of the great things about this, I think, is the film kind of keeps the audience in the dark with the characters. So you get to kind of feel the tension more. You get to feel the uncertainty more. You get to feel the bit of a thrill of the mystery of eventually figuring out where things are going. And as every little piece of the puzzle is kind of built upon, that doesn't really make sense, um, but you know what I'm talking about. Every time you get that little piece of the puzzle, you are getting it with the characters. So you don't have any additional insight really, and maybe a little bit here and there because that, you know, naturally you're gonna get that with, with watching a film uh, over the characters, but for the most part, you're kind of learning along with the characters. And I think that's good because it puts you in the situation of the characters more. You can kind of empathize with them more and understand what they're going through and what they're feeling. The CGI looks good in this because it's usually kind of set uh, uh, against a dark background and, and within a dark environment. And a lot of the times when you're doing CGI, if you have it in a darker setting, it kind of helps smooth out the edges. It doesn't it can make it look not as fake when otherwise if you have it kind of broad daylight it looks pretty fake there's some dialogue that throws out possibilities of what's going on and between camera work character reactions and what is obviously being left out you kind of come to a pretty grim realization as the audience member it's kind of one of those things where it's like they're the the characters are talking it out and you as an audience member are kind of processing what they're saying and they're like well, maybe this is what's going on. Maybe it's this, maybe it's this. And then it's what's not said that as an audience member, your mind goes to, and you have that realization of like, they haven't said this, but this is kind of all that's left. And that's not good. So yeah, I, I kind of like that, that bit of a moment of realization as a audience member where it's like, uh, yeah, I see where maybe this is going. There's a crazy moment I did not see coming, and it's very well done. It's very effective, and I love that. When when there's something that kind of pops out, and you didn't see it coming, but it's a, a pleasant surprise from a horror perspective, I am all about that. So that was really well done. Uh, great quote. There's a wonderful quote in this where um, the main female character, the marine biologist, says, you're confusing coincidence and cause. Now, I feel like a lot of people, especially nowadays, do that. Confuse coincidence and cause. Everybody's looking for a meaning in everything and everybody wants to bend things to their individual thinking and what they want to be true or what they want to not be true. And this film kind of plays with a little bit of that. And that quote in particular cuts directly to that situation of, look, step back. Is this a coincidence or this actual cause? 
you know, are you are you projecting onto this or are you actually looking at it for what it is? So yeah. In every unexpected event, you always have those people who insist on trying to continue their routines and old life and refuse to acknowledge that changes need to happen. Now, something for people to consider, and you see that, you know, it comes up in this film when you're watching it, is that humanity has persisted on Earth because of adaptation. Because when things happen, when uh, unexpected events happen, especially large ones, which they always do eventually, no, you know, you never know how, how long between large events it's going to be, but there's always something unexpected that happens that you need to adapt to, you need to react to. And you, because of how society is now set up and how people get very comfortable, there ends up being a large portion of people who they don't know how to act. And instead of actually trying to tackle what's happening and thinking about it from a intellectual standpoint of what, you know, let's break this down. What should we actually be doing? How should we change our routines, change our life, adapt to this situation? Uh, their, their response is just, you know, I just want to stick with my routine. Like this is too depressing to think about. This is too much to think about. I can't process this, process this properly. Um, or I'm just so set in my routines that I'm just going to try and focus and just forge ahead. Like nothing's happening basically. And that's fully at play in this film with a few characters. One in particular is the strongest with it. And it's a good reflection of what actually happens in the world. You know, think about any situation, obviously the most recent being COVID-19, being a good, uh, um, a good example to look at. You always do have those people who are just like, I'm not going to change the way I'm living. I'm not going to change the way I'm doing anything, even though there's kind of a life-changing event that's going on. Um, you always have those people. And in that instance, it can be very hard to reason with those people, to uh, get them to go along with the actual cooperation for things that end up being figured out that really should be done in order to properly adapt and for the people or the human race to persist. So, or I should say human species, not human race. So, yeah. The ending feels right for the story, and the music they choose at the very end, I think, gives it additional impact, and I think it was very well selected, and for that reason, I love the ending of the film. It gives you some emotional feels. Uh, it plays well from a story perspective. It kind of takes care of it, and uh, yeah, and that kind of speaks to another thing, which is the music for this, the soundtrack is quite well done all the way throughout. It matches what's going on. It's not over the top at any point. Uh, it's very properly at kind of a medium to low level, and there are moments of no music at all, which if you've watched enough of my reviews, you know I'm a big fan of, because sometimes you just need to drop out the music so people can kind of deal with what's going on internally by themselves, kind of figure out how you want to feel as an audience member and how you should feel going forward. A lot of the underwater shots in this film bring a beauty to the film that stands in very bleak contrast to what's actually going on on the boat. So it's just this really cool dichotomy of just like things going on on the boat and then in a very different way you're underwater and it's just like serene and beautiful and just very wonderful. Um, I'm drawn to films like this because I love water-based film just because it can look so good. Plus, there's always, especially with like horror, and this is like horror sci-fi, there's always that extra element of mystery because I forget what the actual figure is on it, but a very, very small percentage of the ocean in the, in the earth has actually been explored because it goes so deep and there's so much of it and we can't breathe underwater, so it's harder to explore it. So um, I think that's one of the other things that kind of draws me to these types of films. So I like when you find a good one like this because there are also plenty of bad ones. I'm looking at you underwater. I did not like that film, but I know a lot of other people did. So no, no problem if you, if you did like it. The term sea fever is basically cabin fever, but on water. Uh, it's when people kind of start to lose it because they've been trapped at sea for so long. So when you hear the title sea fever, just think kind of cabin fever. That's not necessarily what's happening. It's just, just watch the movie and, and you'll understand. You can see influences on this film from things like Alien, John Carpenter's The Thing, Event Horizon, 
Cabin Fever, plenty of that stuff. Mainly horror sci-fi, but not all horror sci-fi. But if you watch this film and you have seen enough horror films, you'll be like, oh, that kind of reminds me of this film, that kind of reminds me of this film. And that's good. It's not it's not a, a situation where they're just like taking things directly from the film, but it feels like those films, and you can see where it came from. So that's cool. When this film was actually first widely released in 2020, many people made a comparison with what goes on in this film to the COVID-19 pandemic, which I can see, I can definitely see, and I'm sure a lot of other people will as well. One big comparison is differing approaches to dealing with an unknown situation and how there's often a lack of cooperation. And that goes back to what I was saying before of people having all these different states of mind, all these different thought processes, all these different ways they were raised, all these different life experiences. No one person is the same. Everyone is very different. And so it becomes very tough when you get into these situations to be able to say, this is what is the most uh, in intellectual way to move forward and then get everyone on board with that. It's very hard because a lot of a lot of perspectives end up being at play, especially when it's a situation like COVID nineteen, like what's going on in the sea, in this film Sea Fever, where you don't fully know everything, and while you're making decisions and while you're reacting to what's happening, it's exactly that you're reacting because you don't really know everything, and there's no way you can know everything at that point. If you could get you know a hindsight is you know hindsight twenty twenty situation perfect but when you're in it you can't so you just do the best you can and you really feel that with this film and for that reason it really resonates with what has gone on and what's still going on with a lot of people in a lot of situations with COVID-19 so very poignant film I mean I know it was filmed prior to it but it's even more relevant now than it was. I mean, it'll always be relevant because stuff like this will kind of always happen. Like I was saying, there will always be that big event that's unexpected. It's just who knows when it is. It could be a long time from now. It could be tomorrow. Who knows? I'm sorry, that got depressing. <laughs> I apologize for that, but it is what it is. So out of five stars with half stars in play, this is a four star film for me. I really like it. I think it's uh, a very welcome uh entry into the uh, horror at sea um, subgenre. So yeah, I like it. Check it out. And I would love to hear your feelings on it, your opinions on it. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. And we can talk spoilers in the comments. Go ahead. I'm good with that. Spoilers, go ahead. Uh, do me a quick favor though. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. If you already are, thank you very much. That helps me out a lot and it keeps me motivated. If you haven't, Subscribe, and you will help motivate me to keep these things going, because that is my main source of motivation. It legitimately is. As I see people continuing to subscribe, I'm like, oh, a new person who's checking this stuff out and appreciates what I'm doing. Awesome. I'm not just doing this for me, which, I mean, to a degree, I'm doing it for me just because creativity. You know, I just want to talk about these films, and where I live, I don't really have that many people to talk nerdy horror like this. So I'm putting it out to you guys. That's why I also like the comments. Um, but also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting out new videos. Uh, you know, no spoiler reviews like this. The more in-depth, spoiler-filled analyses, uh, that those are also a thing on my channel. Unboxings, all that. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.